maybe it's going to be a little bit predictable, but I'd like to focus on some of the challenges that we continue to face after both slow and sudden onset crises. As you can see, I'm going to use Haiti as a background example throughout all of this, partly because it was a bit of a milestone for many crisis mappers. Now, despite the head start that was offered to humanitarians by the crisis maps, there were still huge delays in food distribution weeks after the earthquake, and a cholera epidemic affected half a million. So why couldn't crisis maps prevent this, and could they in the future? Well, maybe we've reached a bit of a plateau in the usefulness of GPS, but there's another technology. It's one that's being used by Walmart to track products and by FedEx to track post. It's called Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID. And it's basically like a barcode on steroids. It allows a computer to identify loads of different objects from a distance. And it does it using four components. You have a chip which stores coded data, an antenna which transfers a signal from that chip, and then some type of casing to protect it. All of that makes up an RFID tag. Finally, you have a reader that decodes the data on the chip and sends it over to a computer for processing. Because none of this relies on satellite, it's really reliable. But you probably know that since Washington's Metro Pass uses our RFID chips. Now, in the time that I have left, I'd like to explain why understanding supply chains is so important, how RFID can help us to do that and improve crisis mapping. So just after the earthquake in Haiti, there were hundreds of containers of aid arriving every day. And those few humanitarian organizations that did try to track what was inside those relied on manual processes or Excel spreadsheets. Now, obviously, that's very time consuming and it's prone to error. But if those containers had RFID tags, then by just refreshing a computer screen anywhere in the world, it would be possible to have a really accurate inventory. And the staff that do this could be reassigned to more critical tasks. There's also a possible cost efficiency. So passive RFID tags will cost you between 8 and 50 US cents each. After they've been deployed, they can be sent back, reprogrammed, and reused as many times as you need to. They also create more opportunities for engagement with the private sector. So let's take, for example, the NGO Cola Life. They found that Coke was being sold even in really remote areas where aid couldn't get through. So they started to slot medicine in the empty spaces between the Coke bottles. Now, with RFID, private actors could have access to more specific information about which distribution networks need to be shared and how. Let's go back to those examples that I gave earlier. When a crowd started amassing around one food distribution center, aid staff started to panic, and they loaded food back onto the trucks, and UN troops sprayed tear gas on crowds. Now, with RFID, it's possible to have really accurate information about which supplies are available in what quantities and where. Imagine if Haitian Radio had that information and had told residents of Petionville to go to one center and those from Carrefour to go to another, or had told people which camps had shelter or sanitation supplies. What about Haiti's cholera epidemic? Well. Microbiologists later found that the river that was the source of the epidemic had been contaminated upstream by a UN base. Imagine if that had been because of contaminated aid supplies. Today, with crisis mapping, we know how many people are sick and we know where they are. But with RFID, it's possible to find out if a particular stock is to blame. Don't forget there's that chip inside the RFID tag that can tell you everything from date of expiry to optimum storage temperature that allows us to identify the batch and make sure that it travels no further. What's more, focusing on supplies also creates a basis which is more level for engagement. So RFID is automated. That means it's not a case of you input and we'll verify, or you use SMS and we'll use GPS. These asymmetries that crisis mappers are working really hard to overcome. What's more, there's transparency advantages. So at the moment, if you look at a crisis map like this one, you might feel quite reassured. You can see that people are sick, but you can also see that medical NGOs are operating in around about the right areas. But what if you knew that people had malaria? And thanks to RFID, you found out that the drugs that were being distributed were for typhoid fever. That can set off alarm bells now. Maybe we're misdiagnosing, or maybe the drugs are being resold onto private healthcare clinics. What's more, as you start to build up some historical data on some of these things, you can get a clearer understanding of the way that different aid distributions patterns can affect things like conflict or long-term need. Now, that transparency is also available after the immediate crisis period. So one of the biggest challenges for most governments trying to get to their feet is simple supply chain logistics. RFID can not only facilitate those supply chains, but reduce the opportunities for corruption within them. So if a governor chooses to pick a few drugs off of the crate or ask for a kickback, that's now visible because the RFID tag will tell you the worth of the shipment as well as the number of products within it. What's more, citizens can now see a misallocation of resources on a map, so they can make more specific demands for redistribution rather than simply, we need X. Supply chain should matter more to the humanitarian sector than the private sector, and yet this has gone neglected. Mapping organizations, aid workers, residents isn't enough unless we understand the supplies that flow between them. RFID can fill this information gap, improving transparency, accountability, coordination, safety, and creating a smoother transition after the initial crisis period. I'll be around if anyone has any questions or comments about anything they heard. Thank you.